Me and Galushin, welcome to another edition of Shoot and Plank. Hey, we've got the Ruger American back with us. And the reason being is, remember in the last video when we fired with this Bushnell scope, everything was doing pretty good as far as online and what have you. You can see right there, but look at how many rounds were being fired on the bottom end of it. Same thing when we shot at 50 yards. And I could not get it to come up. Well, I told you I was going to play around with it and see what happens. And I'm going to show you right here what I think happened. This right here is, of course, your zero adjustment out here. But a lot of them, you actually turn this. And you can turn this one to adjust it. But I think it was slipping. So I stuck my fingers in here into this thumb area and turned it up that way. So what we're going to do today is we're going to shoot at this orange target down here. Now I've got one of my orange stick-ons and we'll just see how it works. We're going to go back here 25 yards and do some shooting. I got you zoomed in on the target. We're back here 25 yards and got a round in. I didn't load too many because we're just going to see what this will do. Um, let me get this up here and see if I can get that Okay, that hit pretty doggone close to the bullseye. Just slightly low. I'm using CCI quiet ammo, but... Yeah, it's hitting right around that bullseye. You can see that. And that we weren't having before. Before it was all going right down below. I could not adjust it. Yeah, it's hitting. That one hit a little high, didn't it? Gotta take a look again in the scope. Yeah, that one hit just a little high for some reason. That's been a flyer. Well, that one hit high too. It's kind of weird. I guess this ammo. But it wasn't before as far as the other. Yep, that was it. We were out. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load some standard in, just a few rounds of it. We'll see what we can find with that. And if there's a difference. Okay, we're over here now. Uh, it looks like right, right here, most of the rounds were right in there. So it was up higher. It might be able to be up just a little bit more and over to here. Because I got one there and I was trying to put her here these two were the quiet ammo as you've seen and uh, this down here where I was really starting to blow it out here and had a good grouping very good grouping that was all CCI standard and uh, just for the heck of it we're gonna set up some uh, plinking bottles knock those over and see how they do Okay, I've cut up a little bit more than just the uh, bottles. I loaded this with 10 rounds of the standard, CCI standard. And we've got the knockouts and we've got the bottles. So I'll start from left to right and hopefully we'll be able to pick them all off with 10 rounds. One didn't go over. Got hit. Okay. No, that was the last one. Yep. All right. It uh, seemed like it did pretty good on that. I mean, without a doubt, there was just this one. And I really think that where it hit is right here, right close to the zero in the middle. 
The reason being I say that is because that's the dirtiest spot and I had them turned this way. Uh, whatever it hit, it did not flip it out and hitting right there, a lot of times don't on these. They're kind of weird. You'd think they'd come flying out. But I had this slightly turned so that this tab was over this way and it may have caught. I, I really don't know why these don't come out. But sometimes I'll hit them and I was like, well, what's the de deal here? Because you've seen it vibrate when it hit. And maybe, well, I don't know if you've seen it or not where it actually hit. But the others, now the bottle, I was aiming for here. I was aiming at two spots on these bottles. One was here and the other one was right here. So whichever way it was, both of these look like fairly fresh ones. Um, and either way, it hit pretty much where I was aiming. So it took them out. It did pretty good on it. Like I said, just that one wouldn't fall out and we don't know why, but I know I hit it. And that's evidently just so that you know, if you have a problem, if you get one of these bushnells or maybe any of them, that would have this sort of a thing where it might be a little loose on that outer ring because what I discovered I started turning it and it turned four clicks without actually turning that center thumb adjustment I don't know if it's supposed to do that or not I presume it's not I'm gonna look a little bit more into this uh, there is an adjustment that you can take it back to zero by loosening a screw and doing it. It's much different than what the Skinner side is. The Skinner side is really super. You just take it, pick up the ring, turn it, and that's it. You don't do that with this. You've got a screw that you've got to loosen. It says be very careful about loosening the screw. And perhaps it was loosened in the factory. Who knows? But um, it definitely did not turn with the center thumb area. So I got in here and turned it a little and I think that's how I got it up and now we're doing pretty good with it and the thing I like about this scope you know not to cut it down because it's it's pretty doggone good scope good and clear uh, but what I like about it is it's got a 12 all the way up to 12 from 3 I think it is or 5 no it's it's 4 4 to 12 I forgot because I've got several scopes all at the same time and up here the parallax Whatever yardage you're shooting, you just adjust it to that. As you can see right there, I got it set for about 20. I should have had it set between the 20 and the 30, but uh, that don't make any difference. Yep. Knocked that over didn't I, without shooting it. Thank heavens I didn't get my glasses. Anyway, that's that's it. It worked. We got it now the way I wanted it, and you got to see that. There were you evidently wasn't a problem other than the fact that that is not turning with the center, center screw. So you got to watch that. So until next time, shoot safe and have a great day of planking.